Discord cuts it out. You, you don't even hear it. Nope, you don't even hear it. Damn. Discord's uh, noise canceling or noise suppression is really phenomenal. It's almost too good at times because when when the DM's trying to make the noise like the creature, it cuts them <clears> out. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I've noticed that too. I'm like, ah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, welcome to Echo Chamber, the session in which uh, we talk about the previous week's session. I I don't know about you guys. I I think I'm just gonna start out with I'm excited to go back to campaign one. Eric, that is no offense to you. I had a lot of fun. I had probably the most fun from campaign two uh, these past two sessions than I've ever had. And 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 that's saying something because I had a lot of fun when Mordai was like pissing around with those statuettes. I um I, I was gonna bring it up here during stats chat, but. I, I think Barry was just starting to come into his own. A little bit, a little bit. I think I think I think Carl was just starting to figure out. Oh, okay, if I do this and this, I have a combination here. I there there is uh, so I, I'm I'm very strat strategic based, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so positioning with with fighter with with paladin with barbarian is a lot of your strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. But with spellcasters, not so much. Like, you have a wide range. Uh, and so yeah. I was wor more worried about my positioning. And now I was like, fuck it. Let me cast spells that like <clears throat> cover the entire area. And then I can go wherever I want. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's funny because you, you see that opposite with Cleek, with Rusty. Because Cleek is always finding the good position <laughs> he is uh, um even the though stupid I, amount of movement even though out, the past last but... time was tits up but um <laughs> he found a, a good position for the other team when uh -huh. he met that that one npc like that guy clobbered you rusty did you expect that like you Dude, you, were, I... you were just flying around like a big dick in a locker room and all of a sudden <laughs> bigger dick shows up you know what i'm saying well, I had I had just gotten through with, uh, you know, fucking stomping out everyone that was on the roof, and then against my better judgment, I went down to help Mordai. Not not thinking that like no, he's fine. He's just gonna book it. <laughs> and then yeah, I got stomped. <clears throat> I, I I loved DMing that episode. There were so <laughs> many there were so many things there, and it was a pain in the ass to keep. For management wise, but strategy wise was so awesome because there's so many. Um, I got this party to split up a little bit. I was able to get to the back line a little bit. It was so much fun from a DM aspect. Yeah, uh, when when we're attacking you in the confined area, completely different mm -hmm. story. But whenever people, it's kind of like the Nasana fight where, where there's like one battle, but there's technically mm -hmm. like three or four different oh. skirmishes. Uh, we end up screwing ourselves that way. Oh yeah, because we are yeah. we are really strong when we're focusing fire on one enemy. But mm -hmm. as soon as we start to spread out and and you know, yeah. Clay has a really high AC, but as soon as I get hit, can't can't absorb that much damage. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. It's like one of those things. Like, I'd rather I think fight like I don't know, two or three giants, frost giants, fire giants, as opposed to like <clears throat> a bunch of like smaller but yet more tactical things. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's 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 also like a lot to do with turn economy, right? Like we, we, turn, we yep. when you, when you have two bigger things, we have the turn mm -hmm. economy. But when right. you flip the switch, it's it's like, all right, guys, we got to be strategic about this. Take out the the healers, you know. Figure out where we need to go. Yeah, absolutely. And like the bandit, like if if you were to, I don't know department size i guess uh you know the bandit should be no problem for you guys even even for as many there was but it was they were just enough pain in the ass um to let their 
bigger guys get get in their hits. You know, it's like they they take the blows a little bit, or they it's kind of like death by paper cut almost. Yeah, yeah it's like most but of the... then you get but then you get hammered. Yeah, they, they were literal meat shields uh, as mm-hmm. we couldn't get through them quick enough before the you know the the guy in the back could cast. Evan, you were going to say mm-hmm. something though. No, no, I was just, I was just going to agree with that. It's, it's, uh, it, when we can focus, it's, it's awesome. But, uh, there were so many people to try to kill at that point that it's like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, we had some people go down cause you know, the focus was, was skewed in so many directions, but at that yeah. point it's, it's, you hope for the best. You hope you get a couple of well-placed fireballs to take people out and, even sometimes that doesn't work, you know? I was actually, you know, I, I don't know if I, I was one of the few, but I was actually never worried about a TPK that fight. Uh, I the My only concern was, crap, we may not have enough diamonds to bring these fuckers back. But that, that was my only concern. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So that, that, that's a, uh, that, that's a good one outside of, of Barry. Who do we have? Well, no, uh, I guess um, I guess I'm, Emerald can revivify. Emerald, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So outside of revivify, which lasts ten rounds, um, you know, one minute. Uh, you have one minute to use revivify. Um, Carl and I talked earlier. You can use resurrection, but we don't have we don't have uh, don't have that spell yet. Um, the only other thing that I thought of in this scenario, um, I get well. I guess one. Let me backstep. I was surprised at the ten rounds. Because I'm like, oh my god, if someone dies, you have one minute. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's ten rounds. All right. Yeah. Okay, hold on a sec. We can we can get there. The other thing is, what other spells can we use to either <laughs> lengthen that time frame or get someone back? Um, and the only one I thought of was Gentle Repose, mm. but I don't, the, I just the next, don't know. The next spell after um, Revivify is uh, Raise Dead. Oh, okay. and then okay. there's yeah. and then there's resurrection got it okay i'll have to look at those but I, i'm just like man so, we've gotten in some really sketchy battles this is really interesting because we have to because because we are a bunch of murder hobos we need to have that's su- that security blanket of okay we can get brought back we we we, we can it's just gonna get harder now <laughs> Uh, so gentle repose, Evan. Uh, refresh my memory. I was thinking that was the the cantrip that you you basically nullified death saving throws and stabilized them. But what? How? Do, how does that keep the enable you to use revivify or anything else later? Because it protects from decay, so yeah, it nullifies it the ten minute or the one minute thing, right? Yeah, I think it. I'm, mm. I'm checking it now. Um, I think it is up to. Duration ten days. So, so technically, if we use gentle repose, you know, let's say we had to go back on onto the <clears> ship, <throat> we could have gotten back to the harbor, pro- hopefully found somewhere that would give us, you know, the three hundred, uh, the, the three diamonds worth a hundred gold a piece, and then used it then, and you we still, would have been okay. You, you still can't use revivify though. It, you have to use raise now. dead or resurrection. Yeah. Oh, does oh, that not nullify the oh, ten minute thing? Re- okay. Reviv- no. Oh, so I was assuming that revivify still. And see, that's a. That's like, yeah, it doesn't the extend the time. It just stabilizes you. You still have to work within the time constraints of the mm-hmm. r- the uh, other spells. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it lengthened. That's actually, I, and I'm glad we talked about this because it may or may not be that some character campaign one has revivify uh or um um has gentle repose because i thought it lengthened that time frame no seven i'm I'm gonna pick on you a little bit then since you're bringing up campaign one has uh playing legion in campaign two how will how do you think that will affect you playing griswold obviously i think you know we talked about this a couple weeks ago that it will probably affect how we all play uh but how do you think since you weren't there will it affect you playing griswold um it's given me two two aspects i i guess 
Um, I guess, well, I'll, I'll say three. One, it's fun being a backliner and, um, you know, just like shooting stuff and being like, ha ha ha, hopefully <laughs> Cleek or like Barry or like, you know, Nina getting in front of me so you don't punch me <laughs> in the face. But it's kind of funny. Like, I kind of like it, it gave me a new, um, uh, a, a new, uh, I guess, area to look at, which was, which was kind of fun. Um, it also, I know that, that um, Siddle has meta magic. But it also gave me a new appreciation for um, positioning with frontliners because I couldn't like if if Cleek or Nene would walk in front like I could I don't have meta magic so I couldn't cast fireball and just blaze them up, which mm-hmm. was which was kind of funny. So it gave me a new appreciation for that, even though we we kind of have that slightly solved in in campaign one ish because of the level we're at, um, but that's kind of a reminder of I have to remember my positioning, not only for the spell casters, but it's, it's just a Evan positioning for Griswold positioning. So it's just a reminder of positioning. So, so um, do, you, do you think playing Legion reminds you of that positioning or do you think <laughs> watching other people play your, your, oh. the quote unquote frontliners has also kind of opened your eyes to say, Oh, that's how you do it. Both, both, both 100%. Um, when I'm watching Cleek and, 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 um, <clears throat> Nene like position off so they get advantage. And, and I think I was doing that a little bit better at the end of campaign one. Um, when we paused that, but it really gave me that dynamic of, oh, like run here and position the attack and reposition with the last bit. So then someone can come in and get advantage and stuff like that. It, it was, it was really, um, really interesting. Um, it also gave me appreciation for the uh, 21 AC that I have in uh, campaign <laughs> one and it rated 80% other than someone coming and saying <clears throat> and doing like 50 points of damage to Legion because he's a squirrely little bastard. <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, a lot of appreciation for um, and respect for, for both frontliners and backliners. Uh, but I'm going to not going to lie, saying I'm casting Fireball. I'm going to miss that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> like fireballing a couple of frost giants. Not going to lie. That was pretty sad. That was, that was pretty satisfying. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to really miss my AC. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, like, well, well I think beautiful. if we go in the stats though, you, you Siddle doesn't actually get hit that often. Right. So it's, is it more of an AC thing or is it more of an HP thing for Siddle? It's an HP thing, I think. Because, like, I stay far enough out of the way, but if I have two two lucky hits, I'm down mm. on the kind of creatures we're fighting at this point in Campaign 1. Or one boulder, either way. Or one boulder, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, so so since since you brought it up there, Rusty, how, how do you think you'll play Siddle differently? I'm going to, and I know there's not a lot of ways to do this. I'm going to try and figure out ways to do a- anything that that I can use as a bonus action, because I've gotten really used to having several hits. <laughs> because with yeah. with you know with with Siddle, it's tough because it's like okay, if I choose to do, use a ranged spell and I miss, it's like well, there went that turn. Yep, and done. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's that that's one of the sole reasons why I took a couple levels or am taking a couple levels in monk is to get that bonus action, even though, you know, I could use uh, spells or something like that. But uh, I think just with the Adrian, it would it's the combination of. Yeah, I think it's 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 really cool how we, now that we've experienced, I, I mean, because we experienced, you know, Shine Bright and other things, but I don't feel that that really had as much of an impact as Campaign 2 has had on a lot of the, the mental thinking about how we play the characters, at least for me. Maybe I'm, I'm completely full of shit. We've had, a, um, we've had a lot more time to dig into these characters at this point and kind that's of... That's true you know, really figure out how to play them, really figure out where we're at with them, you know, dig through, dig through more, more of the, uh, you know, more of the books to figure out what abilities I want to take, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
I'm. We've also gotten into the we're just overrun by people in the battle with thirty something pirates, which was super interesting. That's just the hack and slash <laughs> and hope you survive. Um, coming across the Freedy uh, was was really interesting, and. I, I've personally been just taking this back for Griswold and being like, okay, how can I not screw things up? I mean, even though I know this, it's all story dice and it's just going to be fun to watch Griswold stumble and fall because that's what he does. Um, but um, this is giving me such a, a bigger appreciation for the dynamics of all the parties around, which is which is really interesting how they how they function because. You know, the start of this, Griswold's for our first character, so like I was just front line, and I'm like, all right, you know, let's do this. And now I'm like, oh, I'm sitting in the back, Eldridge blasting bitches and casting fireball <laughs> up my pecker, and you know, just having fun. When I the never fuck did, did that happen. Wait a sec. <laughs> I don't know, but you, you should might, probably. You wanna, <laughs> I was going to say you might want to see Barry about that. You might have to cure disease if, or something. I don't you know. You got some burning going down in your undercarriage. Maybe you should see somebody. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. I'm not gonna lie. Probably. Um, <laughs> it's you know, it, it was. It's a. I have to admit though, it's. Um, I don't know. Just overall new appreciation. For, I, I would be really it. interested to hear from Ashley on this. Like, uh, I wish she was. She was able to be on because I. I mean, her characters are similar, but I would just be interested. I don't know. Yeah, why don't you tell us, yeah. Carl? You you've kind of asked us what what is what are you going to take back from campaign two, seeing as how your your Barry, outside of positioning, because you've already mentioned that. Now that you're Barry and you're a cleric, what are you going to take back to campaign one with Amrook? I mean, because Amrook's a total badass. I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I play Amrook pretty well. No, um, I think. For me, the the biggest uh, the biggest thing I take away uh, was spellcasters got a lot more going on than I ever expected. So I mean, the, and maybe that's not a, a character takeaway, but it, it's just a mental takeaway for me to to realize okay, they got a lot going on. Just just let it go. So I don't know. Uh, I was gonna say one of my other things is the uh, the utility of haste. <laughs> and that that would definitely help Amrook out quite substantially. I, you know what? After that last fight, that it actually hurt you pretty bad. I don't know. Because <laughs> that kind of fucked you up. You're like, hold That's on, guys. True. Let me take a breather. Pop. Ah, I mean, like... just, just wait a sec. Just wait a sec. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Yeah, you just got to not get hit. I mean, that's that's family. really what it comes down to. Uh, in that case, it might help Griswold because he's got a 21 AC. Emmerich only has a 16 AC. He might be a frontliner, mm-hmm. but Adrin is the only reason Amrook can do what he does. And and I, yeah. fully. I mean, in, in the Nasana fight, I'll give Evan full credit. He did most of the healing. He was able to... He tried to touch me inappropriately, but, you know, I I moved at the last second and he touched my inner thigh. Uh, Nonetheless, he did the most healing and was able to to pull Amrook out. But for the most part, Adrin is the the main reason Amrook's able to stay up. I have a question, technical question here. Um, Amrook is how tall? This can make sense. How tall? I'm like three foot seven, I think. All right. Chris Watts, 10, 10 something. My hand comparison to your body, I definitely touched your pecker. There's no doubt. You, like, you, you were definitely going for it, and I turned to the you side. You might have moved. You might have moved. But <laughs> my the the not Evan's hand, but Griswold's hand, which is like, you know. It's I funny that you're the one talking about hand size. It, it, you know what? It's funny. You know, they. I, hey, I'm playing an opposite <laughs> character. I have, I have the smallest hands out of everyone in the group. Personally, Griswold's the biggest guy <laughs> as a character. So I'm just, you know, just. I don't feel it. like I the just... camera does it justice when you hold your hand up there because it looks like a pretty decent normal size. Go get a banana, banana for scale. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. And eat it sedu- seductively live on stream. Maybe we'll get some more followers. Yeah, really. Uh, this is a pen. You know how a pen looks like. This is my hand, and it's not that big. And I would say that 
your hand looks normal size for some reason. Have you been doing something? Look, I don't ask you personal questions. Next topic. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I did not alter my hands for personal pleasure. All right. I, yeah, I have another question. This one, this one's going to Eric. So, Eric, have you ever been, like, in your 30 years of playing D&D, have you ever been in this situation where, like, you, I, I know you, you've been in the situation to, like, switch between campaigns and ebb and mm-hmm. flow and, and all that good stuff, but, um, like, I, I, maybe it's just because it's my first experience. I feel like it's a different experience with this group because we were in into those characters and we were into the campaign two characters. And I don't know what, what's your take on it. Uh, I don't know. Um, yet uh, it happens. Actually, it ha- happens quite a bit. Actually, um, we go back and forth quite a bit just because you you get the unblock. Like writer's block, you get DM block, or you just kind of like oh, can't DM anymore. I need to play, or like I don't know how like Matt Mercer does it. I really don't. Um, like to be the all-time DM just is, but you really got to enjoy it, I guess. And and you know, some people really do, but uh, I, I don't know. I I I don't I, I don't yeah I don't know. It, it's uh it is fun because going back and forth, like i have characters i'm like oh i'd like to go back to play this character when can we go back to play this character and um yeah it, it it is like that i mean you get it's not like i don't want to say you get tired of your characters because you don't but you get anxious to well i guess i guess it's kind of like what you're saying is like you start thinking of well how would this character how would character a act in character B scenario, then you're like, okay, now I want to start playing that character now. Yeah. I I think, so, um, I, I think it's pretty normal. I, I also go into like, all right, who would win in a fight character A or character B? Like I, I run through that, not just for my own characters, yeah. but for other people, I'm like, all right, Griswold meets clique in a fight who wins. And I, I go through that in my mind. You guys do that at all? Or is that just me? Oh, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I've thought about it. Um, I've thought about my strategies against the others as well. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Like, Cleek gets so many hits that I think he'd end up taking Griswold down. Just Even though I have a very high AC, he gets so many hits that just sheer statistics. Like, he's going to hit me more times than I'll hit him. And then, you know, it is what it is. But if I do hit Cleek... Oh, I... With with a crit, and I get to add on divine smite afterwards. Like that's gonna do. Like if I div- if I smite build on top of a crit, that might one shot Cleek. It's just if I can freaking hit him. Oh, I know. Pisses me off. Is Nene is gonna outlast everybody? <laughs> He's got a ton of HP. He has oh. an AC. That's crazy. Twenty, and yeah. he is he is damage reduction to everything except for psychic. So maybe maybe if uh, you're a, a, a psychic warrior or a scion or something like that, maybe you can uh, take him out. But barbarians, yeah, the... man, I I'm telling you, I I'm so excited about Evan's game to get to play a barbarian. Mm-hmm. And then and then if you add something like half orc on there, so you you have the the um ability to to stay up at one hit point and stuff oh yeah yeah you, I'm so telling you. my my and i don't know if i told you guys this or not maybe we talked about this in echo chamber or not but um what i really wanted to do was to have somebody push nine into into off the deck or off the, the and then cast hold person Oh my god. That's so, awesome. Yeah. You have to see Do you him do though, like right? a suffocation damage per round? He doesn't he have drowned. to breathe. Nine I, doesn't I have don't, to breathe. I don't, are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah he doesn't have to breathe. Yeah, I think that, we discussed that one. And uh that that's why I can cast stinking cloud on huh. Nene and he doesn't right, have I, to I need breathe. To... I'll look that one up. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Is it because he's warforged? He doesn't need mm-hmm. to breathe. It's, yeah. it's because he, he doesn't have to eat, sleep, or um, or breathe. Like he goes into a, like a, a hibernation Stasis. status. I think St- yeah. kind of like an automaton. Could you could you if you hold him in the water long enough, just make him rust, and he's got to go find a fucking uh, can yeah, of oil no, right. or a tin man? Yeah, that, that's kind of funny. It's like it, oh, yeah, don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, it uh, would have you're, worked you're, on anybody else though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Right so there. I, 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 I've done that a couple times, and my one friend hates me because of it. She springs it up every time we play. She's, "Are you going to cast a whole person on me while I'm in the water?" So, he probably, uh, he probably sinks like a fucking oh, rock, though, right? Oh yeah, he can't yeah. have very much buoyancy. Oh my god, that is like. All right, let me ask this. Uh, since Eric's bringing this up, I have a, a question. Um, one thing that we I don't think we've done a lot of is use the environment to our advantage uh like i know that reed's climbed on on cliffs and like stayed out of you know harm's way and stuff like that but he's a he's a rogue so that doesn't matter but i mean um, we did push a a something off in a bubble down 30 feet that was kind of environmental yeah oh yeah Yeah, no all right never mind i that was a that was a beat of force that was i i actually yep no that was griswold that was uh that was actually no yeah that was griswold's beat of force with mage hand Mage Hand got the yeah. kill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it didn't die, but the other things did. I would love to see more uh, use of the environment, because I think that's really intriguing. Hold person in the water? That's just damn... Ooh. Could you hold person in fire? <laughs> oh my god, that is rough. Well, see, then they're going to take damage, though. When you're drowning, you don't take damage. You drowned. How, how many turns do you give them? Because people can hold their breath for, you know, two minutes. It, there's a mechanic. It's the, based on uh, constitution. I don't remember the, I don't, I don't remember how it how it works, but yeah, right. it's like so many rounds. I think I think it's like so many rounds, uh, based on your constitution. Okay, okay. I have to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else, I, Eric? <laughs> great job with I campaign. I see the gears so turning, far. everybody. Yeah, for sure. I'm, What's I'm that? a little like, uh, great job with campaign two so far. We are Thank going you. to come back to campaign two for sure. Uh, but I, I got to give you props. It's been uh, exciting. We we were a little on book. Garrett and I actually talked about this. Um, so the beginning was a little on book, you know what I mean? And I feel like mm-hmm. these yep. last like three or four sessions have really been like you putting a lot more you into it. And I don't know mm-hmm. what it is, the, the especially these last two, probably last three or four, uh, but especially these last two, like been very uh, inclusive to me. And, and so I got to give you props. Great job on campaign two. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've taken... You know, I can't take full credit. I've taken some stuff from the uh, Tome of the Annihilation book. Uh, but I kind of made some of it my own. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely liked uh, the Island of Cholt. I think that was kind of where we, we started to get into our thing. And stuff got mm-hmm. a little weird at times. I'll give you that. Uh, but, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. That's funny, because uh, when Mordai said that, uh, no, they think think you're going to stay on the island here, I'm like, Oh, because I was fully expecting you going. Okay, we're gonna head back to to uh, back to the Sword <laughs> Coast, and and we'll pick up campaign two next time, Sword Coast somewhere. He's like, no, I think we want to stay on the. Uh, okay, <laughs> I gotta change plans a little bit. I gotta change gears a little. I uh, we'll see what happens. As soon as you change gears, we're going back yeah. to the mainland. So yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I I thoroughly yeah I I gotta uh, I, I agree with Carl I gotta give you props that was there was a lot of different things that were involved that have been involved in campaign two um, honestly seeing a T Rex and then a dead T Rex it spits out zombies um, I gotta admit that was pretty fucking awesome and and that um, swirl <laughs> of skeletons that when you killed like, it broke down into skeletons I mean it was just good times uh, yeah I mean. There was so much creativeness in that that was uh, it, it was extremely impressive um, and extremely challenging as well. Um, also, having people that are fire resistant and having third third level that, spells. I that... was looking forward to that, knowing how much you guys are uh, fireball happy. 
Um, Who started that cool. trend? This is going to be fun. Some asshole that's some asshole from from another campaign. I think started the fireball happiness. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, no, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the yeah. same time. I'm glad to have you back as Adrian. I think I cannot yeah. wait for Sunday. I think we're all excited. I'm uh, like so stoked. I kind of want to just play right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, Sunday is going to be fun. Um, Evan's Sunday. trying to get us to start at like 5 a.m. <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to, yeah. We'll see if we if we can start a little earlier. We can, but. I think it's time, if you're ready, Siddle, for Siddle's Companion Hi. Magical Artifacts. You're on. All right. Got a couple of fun ones. I uh, I, I definitely cheated a little bit on the uh, on the spreadsheet this week because all three of them that were randomly chosen were like wall of text for the description, and <laughs> I, I wasn't I, I didn't I wasn't feeling that tonight. So anyway. First one up is the Talking Doll out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. This is a common wondrous item that does require attunement. While this stuffed doll is within five feet of you, you can spend a short rest telling it to say up to six phrases, none of which can be more than six words long, and set a condition under which the doll speaks each phrase. You can also replace old phrases with new ones, whatever the condition. It must occur within five feet of the doll to make it speak. For example, when someone picks up the doll, it might say, I want a piece of candy. The doll's phrases are lost when you're attuned to the doll, and this one is purely for mischief, I feel like, for us. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say, that is creepy. As Terrifying. Hell. Um, is Wanna everyone caught game? up on... I, I, um, no. I just stop at that point right there i know where you're going there evan i finished it last night you um, finished last night we got I, we got to the break is where we got we got to the I, break i haven't watched last week's but i watched the week before wait mm. so did you see the doll or did you the see marionettes the yeah 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 that was freaky uh, as fuck siddle are you are you are you watching campaign three did you watch all of the marionettes scene I, I am way behind on yeah. it, so don't worry about spoilers for me. So, yeah, so, so him like snapping too freaked yeah, so. freak Travis out so much. I love yeah, watching He's Travis like, oh, during no, those things. No. He's like, no, no, yeah. no. And then, nope. um, and then whenever like, I think I've been seeing it. Uh, whenever oh, it starts to make them all laugh, oh, wow. hysterical. Yeah, man. yeah. So, so they um the the group walks into a room. They're trying to find an artifact. And they walk up on five dolls, um, all very similar. And then you see them all come to life, their strings hanging like midair. And, like, they don't do much, but they're just a pain in the ass. And, like, you see them, like, like Matt Mercer does a really good job of going, like, yeah. like all. The, and, and what you just described, that talking doll, is creepy as all shit and reminds me of that. And <laughs> like, haunts my dreams because I'm, like, can, like, I used to be scared of the Night of the Living Dummy from R.L. Stein, like back in the day, like mm -hmm. super young. He's I'm still like, afraid. oh my god, he's still afraid. Um, no comment. Um, I could say that. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, terif used to terrify me to. In yeah, no, that's just that's wrong. Um, I love it though, and Griswold would love that magic item. Although he's like, he's he's like, what would Griswold do with that? Wait a sec. <laughs> This is, this is going back. I want to talk about this as well. Uh, this is going back. You have now committed two characters to a love of magic items. And I think you have indicated yourself as the one who, who loves the magic items, not the characters. All right. No, no, no offense to G. Eric has handed out some pretty amazing and extremely useful magic items now g has handed out some pretty cool ones don't get me wrong like the beads of force for like griswold have to be my favorite because you could just mess up someone's day and it's just super funny i think about like hamster and a little ball and you just like, kick them but wand of lightning bolt i mean like i just whip out and just whoosh you know like how cool is that um nene has the nene has the boots uh, you know the dimension door cloak like i mean some pretty 
awesome stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And it also doesn't help that I have an app on my phone where sometimes I just scroll through magic items and I'm like, oh shit, these things do super crazy stuff. So yeah, I do have a love, or I mean, Griswold has a love for magic items. <laughs> Legion, <laughs> Legion just sees that he's like, oh, this is pretty powerful. I want something else. Um, it's totally not me though. <laughs> so you get the cursed um, item. Keep keep going until you get that cursed item. Oh no, item. I I've read about and I'm I'm slightly terrified can, of that. Can we give him a magical ring and he turns into a ten foot tall, uh, you know, cave dwelling little monster? <laughs> That's not what he is already. Wait a sec. It's pretty close. He's not really in caves very much. Oh my gosh! I just want to see <laughs> Evan have to act out Gollum. But ten feet tall. Yeah, right. My press. I would. You know what? How about this? Garrett gives me a ring. Garrett gives Griswold a ring, uh, a cursed ring of protection. Or I. You know what? I don't care. Like something that's pretty cool. But it's also like every time you roll super shitty, it transforms you into something. Because we all know Griswold rolls like shit. So I'd be pretty much a goner at that point. Like you'd see me like transforming in and out of Golem, like like giant Golem, a lot. Like, can you imagine that in town? I'm trying to, like, convince someone, and then I roll in that one, and I'm like, ah, my precious. Yeah, no, that'd be terrible. And terrifying <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I'm all for it. Don't tell I Garrett. I feel don't like a, even a cursed item would not break Evan <laughs> of his love for magic items. It just, I, I think it's it's you know what? ingrained it, in it, him. It might, it might amplify it, actually. I I actually want a, want a sentient item. Because I would love to have that dilemma between what Griswold wants to do and what the sword or or like shield wants to do, and it's mm-hmm. like trying to manipulate me. And I was like, and I'm gonna be like, I will fucking kill you. And then it's like, no, you won't. And then and you then start losing just... HP. Yeah, yeah. Um, the sentient ones actually concern me the most. The cursed ones, I'm like, mm. so that's a cursed a little sentient item. That's what we gotta mm-hmm. get him. I'm a little nervous about sentient items. I really am. Um, but I don't know if, like, most of the sentient ones that I've I've looked at are, like, no, very no. rare. Oh, Add a sentient item. <laughs> Campaign 2. Garrett, Just I so know you you're listening. Uh, throw it in there. Uh, Harshnag's weapon is sentient. Mm-hmm. You know what? If I could single hand uh harsh nags weapon i would be so happy like oh my god that would be baller <laughs> all right just so saying we got the dolls done the marionettes done right. what else you got so all right. all right next one up uh prosthetic limb pretty simple pretty self-explanatory from tasha's cauldron of everything a common wondrous item item replaces a limb a uh, lost limb a hand an arm a foot a leg or maybe or a similar body part while the prosthetic is attached, it functions identically to the part it replaces. You can detach or reattach it as an action, and it can't be removed against your will. It detaches if you die. That's another funsies one. That's a more of an RP one, I feel. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, note, yeah. note to self, don't yeah. cut Griswold's leg off and give him a prosthetic one where you can rip it off and die. What the f- No, 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 it falls off if you die. Oh, I thought, okay, I'm sorry. I heard that wrong, and I'm like, if you rip it off, like some, like Reed is going to rip that off while Griswold sleeps. Just oh yeah. So Griswold dies. Do you have to attune to it? No attunement required. All right. That's Cause that would take up a slot and uh, therefore which, I yeah. know Griswold would never use it. Which yeah. to be honest, I feel like an item that is like, cause that's a relatively powerful thing, right? You lose an arm in combat. I almost feel like that's worthy of having to be attuned to. Especially if it's magical. Maybe if it had, like, if it was, like, holding, it had, uh, had the ability to wield something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it says it functions identically to the part it replaces, so, like... Well, but but if it added to the wielding, you know what I mean? Then mm-hmm. I, would say, I would agree. But like if it, it gave you a plus one on top of Yeah, something? or on, on your dexterity checks or something like that. You know what I mean? I gotcha, I gotcha. Or if it was a you. leg and it gave you a, yeah. a plus one to acrobatics, then I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, That'd it's be... just putting you back at level. Yeah. Yeah. Griswold Which, would. I mean, you could go to you go find a, a druid or something like that. If you're that high enough level, go find a druid and cast a. Uh, uh, um. What the hell is it that trolls have? Um. 
regeneration. Mm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And you just grow back. You just grow back. <clears throat> oh, my God. That's awesome. All right. Didn't know that. That's pretty cool, though. However, if you were going to homebrew it and, you know, mm-hmm. if it was an arm yeah. or, a, like I said, and you added that, then I'd completely agree with you. That, that yeah. would be, I, I think, I that'd think be it, pretty cool. Yeah. Like the, like the Winter Soldier's arm. Like you yeah, exactly. Extra, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that's, that's that, that'd be a two minute. Yeah. I think I think for me maybe maybe it comes down to uh, the stupidity by which the limb was lost. <laughs> yeah, like yep. if you did something really stupid that you were told not to by the rest of your party, then yeah, you you lose an attunement slot. <laughs> yeah, like like that guy that was lighting fireworks and blew off the whole left side of his body. He's all right now. Oh God, that was atrocious. What? That was atrocious. He's all right now. Oh yeah, no, I pick, I'm picking up his foot down. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I'm getting. All right, moving on from prosthetics and fireworks and dad jokes. Can't help it. Um, <laughs> last one on the docket: the Ring of Truth Telling. This is from Waterdeep Dragon Heist. It does require attunement and is an uncommon item. While wearing this ring, you have advantage on wisdom checks to determine whether or not someone is lying to you. I was kind of hoping that it would be the reverse, and it would be like the liar liar ring or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you slip it onto, uh, uh, oh god, um, I'm Warwick. yes, you slip it on Warwick. the Warwick's finger while he's asleep. <laughs> and they that, can't take it off like because it's a cursed item right yeah. you need like remove yeah. curse or uh greater restoration or whatever that would be so awesome oh my gosh you put it on mordai though <laughs> let's be honest like mm-hmm. i like go back and watching eric's face as he's like having this this contest <laughs> as the peddler of the wares and saying no i'm not just giving you shit for free you're not getting a discount and then mordai rolls in Rolled to 30. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, well, I guess you're going to take that for free. Okay. <laughs> I, I I, will say, Eric, I really like that, that you push back with the peddlers, that you're like, no, I don't want your shit. No. I, I really no. enjoyed that. Crap. Like, it, it's tough. It was tough for me playing Mordai and experiencing that but at the same time as as the person watching i really like that you pushed back that that you haggled with them. <laughs> it it put me on the spot like when when Mordai was out and legion had to do that because i had the second highest charisma and i'm like uh-huh. you kind of caught me off guard and i'm like oh shit all right we don't all right, all right i don't uh, uh, uh I, I didn't know what to do i'm like i think right, i think garrett's just living out his fantasies not to bring work talk in i'm not going to go very far into this but there are certain <laughs> individuals who are just constantly like can i get a discount on this can i get a discount on this and so i think it's just garrett living out his fantasies of being on the other side of that equation all right that's um i can respect that i could definitely respect that. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do, what you gonna do? I also yeah. do like having a high charisma, though. That is fun. That ring on either Warwick or Mordai, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should slip it on Warwick's penis mm. for the most effectiveness. Just He probably wouldn't out. even yeah. notice anything, let's be honest. That's, that's, I'm telling you, that's why. Hey, look, there's a new lump. There. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's an interesting question. I do, uh, um, speaking of... <laughs> Go ahead, Siddle. Do you have something else to talk about? Because I don't. He's got ask. one more item. No, no, that was all three. That was all oh, three. We're going to talk about Warwick having the clap now. <laughs> when do Go you ahead. Think I'm sure Warwick's not. He's got sleeping around is going to catch up to him, and has it already? It has already. It just hasn't manifested itself. I think he's got the sif, and it's eating away his brain. Eric, are you thinking that? Other, are you thinking of a disease that he has? Or are you thinking that he's messed with someone enough that they're now in plot to hurt us in some fashion? Maybe both. I wasn't thinking of that, but maybe both. Oh my god, the ex-girlfriend from Blues Brothers? Yes, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> oh my god. I'm I'm honestly thinking it's going to... It, it's both. I think that 
he's gonna we're gonna walk into town somewhere and he's gonna get the smack and it's gonna hurt our reputation a little bit which will be fine that'll be funny but i also think uh he'll get a disease at some point which is going to be funny um i also think that I can't was that he already has it Did i just he heard? Already has it. <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait to see what it does to him it's going to be hilarious and Would then I lesser do think restoration he's... cure him of said disease i thought it had to be greater maybe a lesser I mean, restoration cures of certain disease Paralysis, yeah. blindness, and yeah. some, some deafness, yeah. I think it is. Maybe. I, don't, I guess or, that's DM's discretion or, or, or how, how pussy yeah. this pecker is. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of gross. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you took it. Like, line, <laughs> you went. Really? Did I? You just we said are, pussy pecker. Like... <laughs> I did. Uh. <laughs> that's, yeah. <sighs> I mean, the fact everyone should know if they're wa- if they watch this that Warwick just sleeps with everyone, so they should almost assume that it's pretty bad. All right, moving on from that, I think it's time for Stats Chase. Stats Chase. For some reason, my camera's in front of the Stats Chat. Oh, amateur wow. hour. All right, Stats Chat. So uh, we do have more dice escape. I know there was a lot of stats. So again, Eric, thank you for uh, sifting through those stats. I, I think we could oh, come man. up with something as we talked about today, but you know, it's a balance. I, and I do think it may be a little easier when you're not DMing. But uh, sorry, I, I was I was watching the uh, the stream because I wanted to hear the stats chat. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thanking you for sifting through the streams in order to gather the stats um, and saying that I think there is some sort of balance we could come to on recording stats. Mm-hmm. We just have to figure that out without ruining you know, yeah. immersion and things. But in the future, uh, I, I I mean, the blaring <laughs> stat right off the top uh, for this one was is Legion's damage. So this was the ship uh, or the, the pirate... Um, Cove, you... uh, Shakara Bay. Yeah. Shikara oh wait, do Bay. I do I need to do I need to go into um? Are you are you sharing that or do I, I, I am streaming into... it, but that's okay. I'm, the... gonna, I'm gonna read the numbers because just pretend like this is a podcast. Uh, so Legion doing the most damage, 332 points of damage. I was pretty impressed by that because I think. Yeah. He he threw a lightning out and I think he threw one fireball out. So the rest of that he must have just been hitting most of his spells. Oh, did he throw two fireballs out? I think yeah. I might have thrown yeah, two he did fireballs. Throw... He also yeah, he did throw two had the most kills. I I didn't I I don't think he has mm-hmm. the most healing, so he's not going to get Mordai's hat trick, but I find it funny how in this campaign yeah. we've kind of rotated through people getting highest damage, highest kills, different mm-hmm. stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so Evan, this was your turn. You you have highest damage, highest kills. Congratulations. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an unofficial hat trick if you took the most damage. Let's check. You took the most damage. I did. Unofficial hat trick. Yeah. Unofficial. You see it right there on screen. Unofficial yeah. hat trick, Evan. That's, be, that's because right. the, the, the captain decided to dimension door to me and then annihilate my carcass. I mean, not not worse. I shouldn't say that because Cleek definitely took it ten times worse. But like, <laughs> yeah, That guy I, could only I, hit me before I was dead. Yeah. I got smacked <laughs> a couple of times and I'm like, oh, damn. Oh, we boy. talked about that um, today a little bit. How frustrating was it, Eric, for you to continue to try and hit Cleek on the ground and still keep missing? <laughs> Oh, that was so... I'm like, oh my god, this guy sucked so bad. <laughs> that was terrible. It was hilarious. It was impressive. I was surprised. It did not help the pucker factor that he kept missing, though. Yeah, no. It was so awesome. I, was so awesome. <laughs> I almost thought Eric was doing Finally. it for the pucker factor, just to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was just rolling like that, so... No, it was just rolling like that. Um, as we stated, Barry's number two in damage. Like, yeah. Cleek, yeah. you missed half the fight, and you weren't at the top. I feel bad. I know. No, that's, you know, I flew too close to the sun. Or <laughs> the pirates, as it I- were. Icarus himself. I like it. That's funny, because <laughs> you have wings. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Call Lightning was very effective this uh, this battle. I loved it. Dude, I loved great. every minute of it. Yeah. We we've been inside yeah. for most of our battles, mm-hmm. uh, min- yeah. minus uh, a couple, uh, and I loved Call Lightning. Like that is, I I feel it. It is a very good situational spell, and that situation is you have to have you have to be outside one, and you have to have a number of of uh different creatures like i don't know how effective that would be against two frost giants you know very true very true and your party has to have room to position as well so that Mm -hmm. they're not within so it it was the the perfect storm pun intended see what i did there um i and i was able to have bless up have spiritual Mm -hmm. weapon and do the call lightning Maybe maybe I no I left bless down no, for call light bless, that's what it was, yeah. but I I did yep. cast that like before, shizzy hit the fizzy, um and then mm-hmm. the call lightning had to come out because we needed some DPS yeah. with our our birdman down. Um, let's let's go oh. back to that being attacked by oh cause... oh oh Russ we're losing the bird a... birdman down again, birdman, birdman down. down yep, he can't fly in any weather, uh, it's okay a song reference it's all good don't I, worry it was a big timers reference don't think i don't know <laughs> like you know <laughs> Birdman, motherfucker i got you i got you <laughs> not a sponsor yet uh anyway i i was gonna point out that cleek took the second most damage if that's any thing for him like if that makes him feel better right he took up yeah right the space of taking damage and and i'm really surprised mordai is only fourth because <laughs> that slippery motherfucker, you kept like trying to catch him. <laughs> that his that yes. mirror image was huge. The mirror image was really big. That was a good good spell. The invisibility, spell. the mm-hmm. I I don't wanna, you know, insult Ashley in any way. The fog cloud kinda distracted and then but he was mm-hmm. getting out of there either way. You know what I mean? He was like Poof, yeah. I'm gone and then he took off. Yep. Um, that's why I was not committing to that section. Like, sorry, Mordai, you got to get out of there, but I'm not committing over there. Um, yeah, no, uh, coming back, Evan, if you had to guess a number, are you not, you don't have the stream on right now, right? No, I don't. If you had to guess a number in that pirate kit, little pirate battle, how many people would you say you took down? 12, 12, no, 10. I mean, you're, you're pretty accurate. I, uh, I, yeah. I never feel like I would take down 10 people. So. Yeah, but you took down, uh, what? It, it's only because of Fireball. <clears throat> Fi- fireball took yeah. the two Fireballs I had. The light, the Lightning Bolt only took down one. It damaged two of the others fairly well. Um, on that, that first initial attack, which I was hoping it, I'd, I'd have toasted to all of them, but. I remember I have seven charges. I can really pipe that shit up. And then the two fireballs, I think knocked out three or four, three or four and one. Mm-hmm. And then I think four and another. And then I picked off a couple of other stragglers with that, that Eldritch blast and my plus nine, like, you know, I, and yeah, for some big. reason I roll decently well in damage with Eldritch blast. So like I pop them off and then. Yeah. Yep. And you get two of them. I know mm-hmm. it like, and it's force damage too. So like, <clears throat> not that these guys are ever resistant to that, but like force damage is just fun to play with. I kind of envision Eldritch Blast, like Iron Iron Man's uh, gauntlets, like, you know what I'm, I mean? I've actually thought, so if you pick up um, an artificer and armor, you can choose to have the um, uh, uh, defensive person uh, defense where you can shoot charges out of your hands or you know you could do as his chest if you really wanted it thought about making if we ever do like a one shot where i get like a like a level 12 i gotta figure out like what level i have to be to get it but i'm gonna do the nano armor where you just see like this lengthy human walk in like no armor and they're, you're like this this motherfucker's walking into battle with nothing i'm sure that boom boom and then so you're gonna try and tony stark it Oh, you 110% that shit. Oh my god. All right, yeah. All right. I can't uh, I can't wait. 
I did want to check out this. So we did over a thousand damage. That's because there were thirty fucking pirates. I mean, you have a yeah. point, but still, that's a lot of damage for for one battle. Oh, it was amazing. I'm thinking like Red Hog, like was what like six hundred. That's also yeah. a very valid point. Yeah, and there yeah. were a lot of a lot of stuff going on there, and they were big mother, you know. Uh, so it was to see that that one K. I mean, we we talk about the the one K club as far as our overall uh, total damage, and to to, to do a, a a K as a group in one battle, I think it's impressive. You could talk about it however you want. I'm going to throw healing up there. We all know Mordai's in the top with his healing with 84 points, but I'm going to skip it for now. Wait, how did he get 84 points of heal? Welcome to Echo Chamber, Evan. He gets healing from his inspiring leader, and he is the top of the leader charts for healing. Oh, that's because he gets it's temporary. temporary. It I mean, you know... still, I, I I give the healing stat. I, I completely agree with your choice there, uh, but it does make me a little salty. Because <laughs> I'm the cleric. <laughs> the uh, NPC on the other side had uh, the second most healing. That was the, Him, the nope. cleric himself, or, yeah, mm -hmm. on, on the ship. And then he's the one that did uh, Spirit Guardians as well, and mm -hmm. uh, Spiritual Weapon. Yep. He had a lot going on, too. I was a little nervous about him. Because I knew he could ping me from distance, and uh, I would lose my call of lightning. Mm -hmm. That would have sucked. So, and and a Barry having seven points of healing, I didn't heal anybody. Because um... we this group either really needs it, like to bring them back to life, or nah, I'm good. They don't they don't need so anything because I... they're just gonna kill everything. I know you've got one point credit. Because of Revivify, because technically comes brings you back to one hit point. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, okay. And I think you, I think you did a healing word. Uh, because Legion went down twice. Yeah. And so you cast healing word one time to bring him back the first time. More I think about it, Legion should be more appreciative of Barry. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Legion, he may or, Legion he is. may or may not be. You know, he, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. You don't know what's going on with Legion. No one's been asking about Legion and what he thinks and how he we feels figure and stuff. If we wait long enough, Evan's just going to tell us all anyway. <laughs> I mean, there might be some things going on behind the scenes with Legion, but that's a different story. Maybe. Maybe. It's a different right. story. We got to look at the uh, encounter because, Evan, congrats again. You are now in the 1K Club. <gasps> You, I find it very comical you did not get uh -huh. there with Grizz, but Legion, you're there. Um, I'm like super far behind with Grizz as well, huh? Yeah, you're in the, like the 500s. I, look, I'm just letting you know shit's gonna change. Jack's almost there too. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm really starting to realize that like shooting arrows and stuff like that and... And and making a character like that, like you could do some freaking damage. There's mm -hmm. actually a pretty crazy multi class of rogue, ranger, and fighter that's supposed to just absolutely annihilate people. But you have to do it right, and you have to get like a, you have to be like a super high level to actually make it work really well. But apparently, you just like shred through people. Oh, ranger rogue would be fantastic. Sure. I've thought about it. Would you do Ranger Rogue or a Fighter mix? I personally like Fighter Rogue, but that that's Fighter Rogue was on my list. Uh, like a ranged, you know, just ranged yeah. to sit back with Action Surge and Second Wind and just sit back and go, boom, 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 and just pelt them. Yeah. I I, I would that. say I would say Ranger rogue because hunter's mark along oh. with along with backs um you're right backstabbing um sneak yeah, attack backstabbing. sneak attack thank you that extra d sit the extra d6 you're gonna be doing plus. a lot of extra d6s yeah 
Oh, yeah, yeah that's just nasty stuff right there, for <clears throat> sure. Um, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm... This this was Evan's session because he also pulled Eldritch Blast on uh, on the map as far as uh, you know one of the top two uh, spells that cause damage and, and mm -hmm. if you look at his charts over here you know aver his average like skyrocketed yeah so yeah I'm am high expectations for you Evan to to carry this over to Griswold that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm le so I have a new appreciation for um, for certain things, um, pending that I can roll well, because that's been Griswold's thing is just not rolling well. Um, mm -hmm. But I also uh, I don't know, like Griswold's been on Griswold likes to defend. Um, so he's been a little cautious with with some of his spell slots because um, like Misty, Ste like getting to people to Misty step, it way burns one of my two second level slots. Yeah. Um, so if I like divine smite people and I, then I can't misty step, I'm like, and his defensive, like his defensive where I can, if you're right next to him and someone attacks you and I can put him at disadvantage, mm -hmm. like me, oh, it's just like, mm, that's the thing. Like the bonus action dynamic with, with paladins is such a pain. It's, there's so many options with, with a paladin. I feel like I need to to come to the session about an hour early and review my character just to make sure you, like I have everything all in, in set. What do you think I'm going to do after we're done here? <laughs> You're going to go over Adrian and just make sure, all right, here's what I got to do in this. Here's what I got to do here. What do I, I got go, again? Yeah. I want to go back through all the notes of what yeah. we've done. Um, you know, open like tentacles that are out there. Um, uh, you know, for, for open side stories and stuff. And um, since I don't know if Siddle's going to watch this. So if he does, it'll be funny. I'll tell him this. Um, for one, I um, I want his character in campaign three. I'm calling it campaign three, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be a campaign. Um, but why not? We'll call it that. Campaign three. It'll be a campaign. We know that. Um, I want his I really want to play him again, too. Uh, dude. Uh, I have to admit, out of any of the characters, out of any of the three campaigns, um, I think your rabbit character is probably my the, my favorite. The fact that he likes <laughs> carrot juice and literally can is is a uh, um, hex blade and pulls out a great sword mm -hmm. is like the most comical and most badassery that I have seen. So like favorite character for sure. Um, like this little rabbit character that's you know. And then maybe gosh. five foot tall, and he's like carrying around the same sword that the the Bosco guy was using that killed Cleek. Yeah. Just kills me. Like, like what the hell? Um, I uh um if if Cleek's or Cleek if Re uh jeez I'm mixing up all the names. If Rusty's character <laughs> in the third campaign tries to mess with the categorizing hat, um Harry Potter not a sponsor yet. Um, I'm gonna admit it, it's a sentient being. I'm gonna have it fuck with him so hard, I and I hope he does. And I it, and depending on where this goes, if for some reason that ends up with campaign one and Siddle wears it, I'm gonna mess with him so bad. <laughs> like it's gonna be so good. How yeah. would you mess with him when you're not DMing campaign one though? I'll you know what mm. I will I will write that shit out. Yeah. All right. I'll all be right. Like, Something to think I'll about. Be like, that's all. Like, these are my suggestions on how it should because i want siddle to wear it i really do i all right i got one more one, one more comment then i'll open up you guys and then we'll end it because it is going a little long uh i one thing that frustrated me about this past session is that the entire crew seemed like they were allergic to healing spirit I don't know if it frustrated anybody else. It came out for like Dude. the second time in all of the whole campaign. And everybody's like, I'm not going near that thing. It's like, what the fuck? If, if, if that was Adrian, you'd be like, you know what? Screw you guys. You don't want a healing spirit. Fine. I won't cast anymore. I'll cast something else. That's I was watching I that too. Like, why isn't, why isn't like, you went through it once. Nine was Legion like dancing around it. He's like, I'm not going through it. No, no thanks. Uh, 
Jack went through it once, but then he was like, fuck that, I'm not using it, or something like that. <laughs> and Legion, he just didn't have a chance to. <laughs> no. It was just dead. Oh, but no, I, I had to mention Healing Spirit. Ashley, I, I think that's a OP uh, uh, ability slash spell uh and you got to use it more often and hopefully people realize what it does and aren't allergic to it uh you guys got anything else before we wrap this up um i just i was i was kind of hoping rusty was still here but uh i'll ask evan what was it like being dead um (laughs) it was it was fun to sit not fun to sit back and watch everyone like um you know go through the battle it Mm -hmm. also but it also put the perspective of um it reiterated it because uh griswold's been down like that once before that um position not positioning but it's good to cast fireball and try to be a badass but you also have to pay attention um and it's the dynamics of of the game i wouldn't have thought that like no one was close enough to me that I would have thought, oh, no, they'll, like, they'll shoot me with an arrow. Like, I can absorb that and adjust. Uh-huh. No worries. It's okay. And anyone close enough, they would have had to have had an, uh, gotten an opportunity attack from, like, Nene or someone else. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, the captain's like, time out. He, he knew that you uh, were the one. I mean, he, he had the idea that you're the doing the damage. You, yep. you blew up his sh- the ship. You blew up people. Um. To to him, you were the you were the first and foremost threat. Yes, I like that. I like it. But it opens it up to. Um, I always have to think about that though, because I mm-hmm. wouldn't have thought that. Oh, he's just going to do that. So, like, what do I do on the back end to mitigate that? If if I can, you, just, you you throw the fireball and then run around the corner. And you run around, yeah. I could have cast invisibility. No, see, invisibility is a second level spell, and I didn't have any. Um, and I had already cast two fireballs, so I couldn't. I would have had to waste it around to use my rod of the pack keeper to regain a spell slot and then cast invisibility. Um, but it was a new appreciation for. As we get into these higher levels, you have to keep stuff like that in mind. Like there, and and that's where strategy mm-hmm. really comes into play. On hey, you just everyone can't just go in and be like, I'm just going to kill whoever the hell I want. He um, he was either going to go after you, or he saw that Althea was so far behind everybody else. You know, she's the set the 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 separated uh, uh, deer uh, out of the pack. You know. Ashley, he was either going to go. He means emerald. Yeah, that's why I meant emerald. Um, he was either going after after you or, or emerald. Um, but seeing that you, knowing that you uh, were the high firepower, he, he... C- cast him fireball and being a total a hole. It's like mm-hmm. I'm going to go stat. And you know what? It yeah. was it was honestly a beautiful thing. I'm like, oh, I really need to pay attention to that. Yeah, and especially when we're spread out like that, nine was all mm-hmm. the way over here. It was it was perfect storm. It was, uh, oh, in I more ways it. than one. It, it was yep. it was uh, uh, you did a great job, Eric. I enjoyed oh God, yeah. that battle immensely. <clears throat> like after playing Amrook, like I really enjoy Amrook, uh, and and playing Barry, I was like, I'm I'm probably not going to enjoy combat as much as I do Amrook. But that session, I I truly did. Yeah, that's cool. Good, good, good. Evan, you got him. anything else uh, other than your? Uh, you are the only person within all of us to die in two campaigns. Um, it was sad in both. <laughs> um, it also made me um clench my butt cheeks, and I did start to write down. Um, <laughs> and I am going to develop these these characters out. Um. <clears throat> it'll uh, i definitely know what i'm gonna do if griswold actually dies um i already have that character built out no he's not built out but i know what it's gonna be It'll be amazing i wanted um, to cut the stream off like halfway through this but I'm all back. <laughs> campaign two though um i've got a couple of ideas in mind but uh um yeah i definitely gotta 
keep this in mind because at any moment they can die. It's All right. I think that's a good way to end it. At any moment they can die. Thanks everybody for yep. watching, and we will be back Sunday night with Campaign One with some Grizz Adren action. We'll see you then.